Hello there, I'm Lance Ash, and you are listening to a very special edition of Ramblin'. Um, truncated week this week. I called in sick the first two days of this week. And um, so therefore I was supposed to record on the way into work tonight, but I forgot. So I'm recording on the way home. And um, most of the topics that I had planned I already used up on the show I do with my wife. So I have some ideas, probably boring ones. But um, let's talk about music. Um, some bands I want to go over. Let's start with Aerosmith. I used to really like Aerosmith, um, and I still like their older material, but I don't have much respect for them anymore. Um, I think they're just an oldies act at this point. Let's go through the albums one by one. First album is great. It's a different kind of Aerosmith than you get later on. And Steven Tyler sings in a different way. Um, second album, I don't care for all that much, but I do recognize that it's a great record. Then third record, Toys in the Attic, that's a masterpiece. Fourth record, Rocks, that's their all-time greatest record. My favorite Aerosmith record. Then you get Draw the Line, which a lot of people think is some sort of uh, failure or it's some sort of um, diminution of focus. But I, I disagree. I think it's their second greatest record. It's, it's a great record. Then you get Night in the Ruts, which is universally seen as um, a step backward. But I disagree again. I think it's a great record. Um, there's not a bad track on it. Then the original band split up. Um, well, that is to say the two, the two guitar players left. And they did um, Rock in a Hard Place, which I will admit is not good. It has a couple of good things on it, but um, yeah, it's that's the step backward right there. Then they did, then they got back together, original lineup, and did Done with Mirrors, which a lot of people think is a bad record. I don't think it's a bad record. Um, I think it's a different kind of record. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Darkness is a good song. Um, I can't remember the name of the song. Uh, it's the first or second song on side two. It's got a uh, an, uh, one of Joe Perry's extended guitar solos. It's really good. Um, and their version of Let the Music Do the Talking is better than the ver version on the first Joe Perry Project album. And let's talk about those records quickly. Um, I have the first three albums by the Joe Perry Project. Everybody says the first one is the best. I disagree. I think the second one is the best. Um, the third one is a pile of shit. Um, then uh, Aerosmith did their big comeback record, Permanent Vacation, which at the time I thought was great. I wasn't musically savvy enough when that came out to realize that it was just uh, professional songwriter, corporate rock. Um, then, they did the, then they had the really big comeback record, Pump, 
which when it came out I was mature enough to realize it was pretty it was not good you know give it a grade C the song Love in an Elevator was good especially the that that instrumental part in the middle um and I liked Young Lust at the time. Listening back to it now, I just don't think it's that great. The guitar solo on Jenny's Got a Gun is really good, but other than that, the, the song is forced. Um, yeah, it's not good. Then, um, Get a Grip came out, and the thing is, I remember all these... I, I think I've gone over this whole fucking thing up before. Yeah, I remember interviews with Steven Tyler and Joe Perry where they said, well, you know, we've had to toe the line up till now to prove our commercial viability, but now that we've done Pump and sold so many records, now we can do the record we really want to do. And the record company jerked the rug out from under them. And they had to do um, Get a Grip, which is terrible. And I, that's the last record I got by them. I just can't be bothered. I've got the live record, the double live uh, bootleg record, which I don't care for. I don't care for live records. Um, now, I always think of Aerosmith and Cheap Trick together for a couple of different reasons. I was introduced to both of them through the movie Fast Times at Richmond High. So, um, and plus, Joe Perry and Rick Nielsen both played on Gene Simmons' first solo record. So... They're connected in my head. There was a time when Cheap Trick was, you know, right up there with Aerosmith as far as fame and all that. Um, I like Cheap Trick a lot. To me, first record's great, second's, you know, obviously a, a masterpiece. Uh, Heaven Tonight's great. The Dream Police is great. Um, a lot of people don't like All Shook Up. I think it's great. Then they did... Um, is it One on One? Is that the name of the album? It's not very good. It's got a couple of things that are okay. Standing on the Edge is not very good. Uh, what was the one after that? Was The Doctor the next one? That's a terrible record. It's puke. Then they got back to the original lineup, but got back together, and they did um, Lap of Luxury, which I really liked at the time, even though I knew the, the, the Song of the Flame was garbage. Then they did Busted, which I never heard. Um, Woke Up With a Monster, which the song Woke Up With a Monster is really good. But other than that, I don't give a shit. Then they did their big comeback record, the second self-titled titled record, which that, that should have been a big hit. And they got shafted. Um, and the last record I have by them is Rockford, which is a really good record. I need to get all their stuff. Their live record, their big Live at Budokan record, I don't give a damn one way or another and I want to address an issue <sighs> their big breakthrough was with the live version of I Want You to Want Me off that record and of course everybody says oh the live version is so much better than the original no it isn't it's same thing with Kiss's first uh, live record oh the live version of uh, Rock and Roll All Night is better than, than the original no it's not Let's just let's just deal with that issue flat out. Oh, I think I've said all that before on different episodes in the past. All right, let's go on to the next uh, topic. What's something else we can talk about music-wise? I hope that these allegations against Till Lindemann are not true. And I hope that if they are true to some extent that it's not as bad as it's been made out to be and but the thing is I think Rammstein is washed up anyway because the last record was crap 
and I think at this point they're basically just a live act. I don't think they're, they're putting much effort into the albums anymore. And I think that the, the way the record industry is right now, they're making far more money off touring than they ever will off album sales. I think so. And Health Machina put out a new video the other day and uh, apparently it's not connected with a new album. It's just promoting the new tour. So I don't know what that's about. Uh, I need to get some stuff by um, Icebreaker. Icebreaker. I'm trying to think of some other bands like Aerosmith and Cheap Trick I can talk about. Oh, well, let's just talk about some, uh, this, a side issue. Um, it's a shame that a band like Ur Uriah Heep isn't considered in, in the first or second rank anymore. And, and I've talked about this before, but one of the reasons is no consistent lineup. No no consistent membership in the band. Like, wh who is Uriah Heep? It's basically Mick Box now and whoever he has with him. You've got to keep the original members. If one dies, that's different. You replace him. But it's a it's a shame I can't go back in time with money and clout and knock some sense into Ace Frehley and Peter Chris's heads. You know where Kiss would be today if they had the original lineup still? <sighs> but no, no. Oh. I had Friday off. Scheduled. Uh, leave off so I could go to doc doctor's appointment and then my wife had some heart problems she's got um, irregular heartbeat beat and she was in AFib for like 11 days so I called in Sunday night and Monday night so I basically had a five day weekend and uh, I knuckled down and got some work done I got a painting done shortest amount of time to finish a painting in years it took me like four days, five days to finish a painting, which is unheard of. I think it helps that I'm, I've settled into a routine thematically and um, procedurally. Oh my God, I'm so out of it now. My knees have been hurting lately. I feel grubby. I need a shower. I'm passing by where my sister works. She's a nurse at a, um, mm, what would you call it? It's an eye surgeon's place. Anyway. I wonder if she eats at any of these places that uh, surround where she works. There's a Marco's Pizza and some other stuff. Bunch of restaurants right through here. Well, let's talk about Trump. I really thought there was going to be violence at his arraignment. But. It didn't happen. I mean, Carrie Lake, that moron, Carrie Lake, was out there demanding that all Trump's true followers show up brandishing their guns and their religion and keep our chosen one from being 
taken away. These people are crazy. They're crazy. Wouldn't it be great if we had a president who, you know, first press conference says, there's a few things we need to go over, everybody. Number one, there's no God. It's about time somebody with authority told you the truth. There's no God, folks. There's no soul. There's no afterlife. There's no heaven. There's no hell. There's no ghosts. There's no angels. There's no demons. Okay, can we just drop it, please? And that goes for, not just for Christianity, but Islam as well. For Hinduism, for Zoroastrianism, all of it. Oh, so many problems would be solved if people just dropped it. Oh, it wasn't as bad of a night as I thought it was going to be. But, probably means tomorrow is going to be pretty bad. Mm. My wife put a slice of cake she bought at the store in my lunch, and I didn't like it very much. I'm not a big fan of um, <sighs> that sort of sour tasting cream cheese icing. It's just, I, I don't like sugary shit. I like pastry, cake, pie, but I don't like sugary icing. And the cake had coconut or something in it. I kept burping up coconut the rest of the night. Oh, God. I hope I sleep well today. I haven't slept eight hours straight in years. Years and years and years and years and years. Um long time ago, I got in the habit of sleeping four hours, then getting up, and then booting around for a while, and go back to sleep for four hours. And I can't break the habit. No matter what I do. So, uh, what I do now is, when I get, get up at midday, I use that time to do my second round of meditation. Um, And uh, I think it helps me sleep. Slept really well yesterday. Let's see how much time we got left here. Not too much more. Oh my god. I hope there's something tasty waiting on me at the house to eat. I wish we had like leftover pizza, you know, from somewhere really good. There's two places in Athens that are good, have really, really good pizza. There's Pepino's and Little Italy. They're owned by the same family. Um, that's the best pizza in town. There used to be a place called Rocky's. They had good pizza, but they're out of business. I think Mellow Mushroom is out of... Maybe they're still around. They had good pizza, too. Um, it used to be a place called Steve Arena's. I never got to eat there. They sold subs and pizza. That was a relic of the old Athens. The old... 70s and early 80s Athens that I never got to experience. It's born a little too late. And born to the wrong people. Mm. I've paid, I, I don't know. All that time period appeal, appeals to me. If, if I if there was if I had to, if I had to pick a year to go back and, and savor with my current mind, I would probably pick 1978. 
I mean, there's a lot of years I could pick, but that I think that would be a good one. Visit a radio station in 1978. Big bag of weed. Mm. I prefer the term grass. That's an older term. People used to say grass. Got any grass, man? If you want to get the creeps, look on YouTube at like, um, the, uh, people have made recordings of um, like ads for, um, that uh, networks would, would put out, the, the new show is coming this fall, 1975, and oh my god, it gives me the creeps. All that just pablum. I don't think things were better in 1978. It's just that it, there was stuff on the periphery of my perception back then when I was eight years old that I didn't, you could see it. But you didn't know what it was. You couldn't understand it. You couldn't fully really grasp it. I mean, I remember back then, occasionally you'd, you know, you'd catch Saturday Night Live. And a lot of it was just over my head. I didn't know what this was, what was going on. I didn't know what the coneheads were. There was this woman that um, went to our church, and she had her... Uh, her house, she had a basement, and they turned it into a, like a rec room for her kids. Her kids were a, a couple years older than I was, and um, they had a poster of the Coneheads up down there. And I just, it just gave me the willies. I did, well, what is this? What does it mean? Everything is just. Uh, television's better than ever, to be perfectly frank. I mean, it really is. You'd never have had a show like Bosch or Endeavor or the new Perry Mason or um, even shit that I don't care for, Sons of Anarchy or Deadwood. Or I, I, I have to admit, those shows are way better than anything back in the old days. Everything in the old days was spelled out for you. You know, it was all... And, and there could, couldn't be any rough edges. No, don't want to offend anybody. Now, you can have a show like that. People talk the way people actually talk. Well, I think I've rambled enough for this week. Um... I can't think of anything else. Oh, by the way, Trump's not going to jail.